Oscar, are you excited to be back in LA? I am. Finally, we're back in this. People have been saying it's the most beautiful city in the world. Mm, the most garbage filled city in the world. Wow. It is. What a claim to fame, huh? Yeah. All our LA listeners are like, don't you fucking dare talk oh, shit about even, my garbage. We're tape. not talking about garbage. We're talking about the people. Oh, yeah. The get most em. garbage get people. Em. Get them. It's you, very clean the city. Listener. Very clean city. My yeah. name's Oscar. My, my name's, name's Carl. Carl. This is who would watch, watch this? this? Did you say my name's Carl as well? That's such an L on you. It's, it hurts because we've watched to call people garbage and I've taken such a big L. So I'm worse than the garbage people. My name's Oscar. <laughs> no. You, I can edit that in. No, I can edit that in. Can't. I can edit that That's in. That's what it is now. Do, 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 do. What? I don't even know how our theme tune goes. Do, 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 ding, ding. Do, 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 Welcome to Who Would Watch This, the podcast where we watch a film, chat about the film, and try and figure out who would watch this. Today we're talking about Fast and Furious, which is Fast and but Furious. But Carl, we already for- talked about Fast and Furious. Isn't it crazy it took them this long to lose the thes? It makes so much more sense as Fast <laughs> what and Furious. What were the other ones called? So they had The Fast and The, the Furious, Furious, silly, which makes no sense in Too hindsight. Too Fast, Too Furious? Great. Wonderful. Genius. An iconic title, really. The Fast, The Furious, Tokyo Drift. A mess. Yep. It underperformed. Who knew? Word vomit. Yeah. And then this one, genius move. Lose the the. They got Sean Baker. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody came into Universal and they're like, you'll make a hundred million more dollars in the box office if you lose the the and the the. And they, and they nailed it. This is the fourth in the franchise. Mm. Chronologically, the third. <laughs> <laughs> Keep them in check, Oscar. <laughs> oh, I've got my dates. I've got to, by the end, I want to have a massive, like paper like map of just uh, what the timeline is i know the timeline's a mess but i like to think the fourth fifth and sixth film happen in the same year <laughs> uh, same month it's it's a big year for Vin. a week <laughs> <laughs> uh fossil furious 4 has a 26 percent on rotten tomatoes a 6.5 on imdb and a 2.9 on letterbox i believe it is the fr- the franchise low really at the moment. is is not f9 I, I was thinking that is f9 not worse i think this is the worst one which i would say i don't know We'll get into it, but yeah. yeah, go on. Yeah, I think, I mean, we'll find out F9 when we get to it. I think that has a better Rotten Tomatoes, but a lower IMDb. Yeah, gotcha. So I don't, I don't know. But as far as we're concerned, fourth one, this has the worst reviews for sure. Gotcha. Uh, the plot of this one is Brian O'Connor. We're just going to call him He's Paul. Back. <laughs> I keep forgetting his name's Brian. Paul's back. Back working for the FBI in Los Angeles, teams up with Dom Toretto to bring down a heroin importer by infiltrating his operation. Wow. Wow. Finally. <laughs> what do you mean, finally, Carl? Um, it's a weird structure to have had the first film. Yep. Then a second movie that is just about one of the leads from the first one film. One of the leads, but like a buddy cop film. Yeah. Were they in Miami, Mike? Forget yes, they, they were in Florida. Yeah. Um, and then to have a third film that's about nobody, but then have a cameo by the lead from the first movie at the end of the third movie. And then a cameo in this one with a side character that from dies. The third movie. If anyone, this is the only character that does die and is brought back. Yeah. So it's a real. It would have been really weird if you were, like, dying to find out what happened. <laughs> You'd be like, wow, I waited eight years. Like, this is actually what they talk about. What This this movie is what a legacy sequel is now. Mm. Eight years after the first, with the full cast returning, yeah. finally. So, this movie makes some weird it's a pi- decisions. It's a pioneer. It's yeah. a pioneer. It was finding its steps. What do you do when you reboot a franchise? This one has to find out. Um... All right, Oscar. Now we have been instead of doing our uh, let's back in time, our back in time. Not segment. because we've been forgetting. No, nope. It's a separate thing. It's because we have a little gimmick. We love a gimmick, Carl. Last week you said you have ninety seconds to rehash the last three films. Now, can you do it? The I believe it's your turn. I don't think it was a turn. I believe we're taking turns. I thought that was thrown out there. It's your idea. Ooh. So I've got 90 seconds on the clock. Fuck, okay. And you've got to recount Fast and Furious 1, 2, and 3. And we're going to go for it now. Dom Toretto is a is an LA-based guy. And Paul Walker is an FBI undercover. Now, they sort of get into a bit of mishaps. 
pretty much. They team up by the end. Now, Paul Walker's FBI, so he's got to take Dom in. He lets him go. That will come back today. Now, second one. Dom's nowhere to be seen because it's Paul Walker's story. And guess what? Tyrese is there. The Gibbs. They go to Miami to stop a coke dealer. They're FBI, but they're kind of like underground the drag stars. Most of the films involve drag racing. Luckily for this M Miami guy, also drag racing. They foil him by driving a car onto a boat. Now, you're thinking, <laughs> what could go on? We're in Tokyo. Now, bam. bam. <laughs> I keep forgetting. I want to say Sean. Is that his name? We'll never know. We'll never know. The blandest man. Balding man. The, the Balding 30-year-old man. A 58-year-old man is in Tokyo. He undercover as a, as a child. And he has to upset the Yakuza, Yakuza's nephew. He does this by just bumbling his way through trying to drift. And then he... Okay, cool. Um, he bumbles his way through drifting. He doesn't do anything well until Han, the Superman, shows up and goes, Hey, you should learn to drift. He then beats the Yakuza's nephew by drag racing him. And then he's a hero. Also, Dom, right at the end, is like, I know Han. I used to fight with him. Han's dead. And that's it. And now we're up to date. Wow, six seconds remain. That's huge. Amazing. That's huge for me. I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do all four next time, but uh, we'll see. It's fun because I feel like they're, because they've been separate, like, luckily for us, they've been separate little sections. The second they start intertwining, like, in this oh, one. It's going to be rough. It's going to be a mess. The, it's so funny seeing what I think is this movie is just an amalgamation of the previous three. Yeah. The first movie's characters. With the stupidity of the second movie, a bit stunts, wacky, yeah. But then, like the good directing of the third movie, they were like, "Let's let's do some car racing and make it look n not too bad." Yeah, which might think, "Oh, well, then this must be the best." No, no, you would be no, wrong. No, I've never seen this one until this is the only one. Oh wait, no, I hadn't seen two. I hadn't seen two Fast Two Furious until we started doing the podcast, mm. and I hadn't seen this one. I'd only ever seen eight, a seven, so. This is huge for me. Wow. I'm learning a lot of lore. I'm completely up to date. I've now seen all 10. <laughs> <laughs> You're a Hobbs and Shaw fan. <sighs> we'll get to it. We'll, we'll get, get to it, to it later. Anyway, should we jump into Fast and Furious, Carl? Let's do it. We begin with a pretty pretty top-notch action sequence. It is good. I'm going to say it is. A yeah. Good one. But you know, the problem with this scene is you kind of go, this looks great. How boring is the next 30 minutes going to be? Oh, <laughs> Any this movie sets you up for I action packed. You've got, okay, let's set it up. Dom's back. Huge. You got, Le you got Letty. They got Letty back? That's nuts. Han's back. Back? What? He I'm dies. Confused. Don't worry. This is 2006. I did the date. This is 2006. Han's with the crew. They're trying to rob an oil tanker going through the desert. They've got a couple of cars. They're drifting. They're hatching onto their little backs and they're speeding off. It's thrilling. It is thrilling. It's, yes, the CG in the scene. A lot of it's fairly practical, though. I think so, yeah, I think definitely. it looks really good. Mm. Up until it gets very silly. There, at the end, it climaxes. I mean, a guy jumps out of the car with an iguana. It, Do you want to chat about that? Um, no. I think it's an odd decision. <laughs> it's an odd decision. To, one, give him the iguana, mm. but two, I would dare say have that character suicide. Mm. We don't see him again. No. We assume he lived. I reckon there's internal bleeding, and he did indeed I die. assume the iguana... Ate him. Oh, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Limb from limb. It, Succulently. The film cleverly went, this iguana can eat. It set it up because it ate a little snack. And he was greedy, wasn't he? It was. He ate that man. I would happily watch the nature documentary of the iguana eating the man. <laughs> Slowly. Slowly. A good two hours. Longer. <laughs> I would admit mini series, true a crime. Series. HBO's producing. It's got a third season. And oh, it's riveting. And I'd and I'd listen to the accompaniment pod, uh, podcast as well. <laughs> I'd go anyway, all in. The oil tanker blows up. It rolls around. Dom drives under. Fast and furious, baby. We're in. We're in. <laughs> so far, I'm like, this is pretty d decent. I'm having fun. It is. This is. I'll say it right now. The best scene of the film. <laughs> they it, didn't because this film, all these films are pretty much like we've got a sick stunt, and they go great. You need to connect these. And go oh, oh no, no. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> okay, fine. We get one at the front. You don't have any context for that. The um, it's it's a real shame because I hadn't seen the movie before, and this scene began, and I thought, oh, I'm hyped yeah it is it's a big welcome back mm. and i also would have loved to because i we both know where this franchise goes yeah 
This scene would have been crazy if you'd just been following it and this was the latest one. Don't you reckon? What do you mean? Like if so if you had only seen one, two, three Oh without yeah. the knowledge of knowing where the series is yeah, gonna yeah, yeah. end up, yeah. this opening sequence you would just be thinking Holy shit, they've gone to like an 11 all of a sudden. They've nailed this. Ugh. The film then goes to a grinding stop. Oh. It's like, it's like hey, a stop sign. Yeah. Oh, oh. Huh? it's a driving rule. <laughs> you go vi- you go past the stop sign without stopping? A fine. They're a at big a red fine. They're at a red light. It's not green. It's a shame because this film goes it's got the most intense car driving and then it's like should we be a soap opera for the rest of it? Yep. That's pretty, that's exactly what it is. Because Dom's like, hey, we've had some fun, Letty. She's like, yeah, we have. Should we settle? And he's like, this car, I'd rather kill myself than leave it. I would rather. (laughs) (laughs) You're absolutely right. He looks her dead in the eyes and goes, I'm sorry, Letty, but it's my franchise. And there's no room for women like you in it. (laughs) She pretty pretty much much pushes her into the car. She's like, well, that's done. Hopefully Later, when he's trying to figure out who killed her, it was him. He looks in the mirror. Oh, a car mirror. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it was a reverse camera on himself. <laughs> he puts the car reverse, handbrake on, runs around. Me. <laughs> <laughs> All flashbacks should be in a reverse camera. That would be a hilarious way to display it to the audience. Just putting it, going from park right into reverse, and that's when we get the backstory of somebody. Oh. Cinema. Wait till the fifth one. <laughs> You're welcome, Fast X. Yeah. Hey, take it. It's not too late for you to do reshoots. They're like, get Vin back. We've got a some podcast has given us an idea. <laughs> Who would watch this has gone off the rails <laughs> and they're on a point. <laughs> anyway, so Dom's leaving Letty. They're at a big party. Han's here. Han's here. Han has the funniest line because he goes, Hey Han, you want to hang with us? He's like, No, I'm going to go to Tokyo. Oh. The Bruce looks at the camera like, remember Tokyo Drift? You just watched that one. You'll get used to this. He says this every movie he's in. Really? Up until they realize, no, we're up to date now. <laughs> every end of the movie goes, I, I'm thinking to go to Tokyo. And then the next movie starts, did you go to Tokyo? <laughs> no, but I'm thinking this time I'm <laughs> <laughs> He's postponing his holiday. Don't it's make me like go to Sean. Dr- it's like the, dr- uh, the actor refused to say it so they couldn't kill him <laughs> off. Just like, oh, so We've killed you to- off. I'm not going to Tokyo. I'm not going to Tokyo. <laughs> if anyone tells you I've gone to Tokyo, they are lying. He says that in every scene, just the background. It's unusable. It's like you with the bits in the podcast. Like, put it in. You can't make the film without me. They go, like, God damn it, Han. In the background of every sequence, you won't take me to Tokyo. <laughs> I'm not going. <laughs> um, anyway, we yeah. never see him in the film no, again. No, he's gone. <laughs> we assume he's dead until next time. <laughs> so anyway, that's the that's the the vibe. Now we we're suddenly like, well, I'm bored. Paul Walker's through. <laughs> He's running. He's running down LA again. <laughs> Way better looking than the last. Like it any is, of the isn't movies, it, right? isn't it? I can't knock because this director sticks around for a while, yeah. and I think he does do what is the best movie, which is next week. Oh, uh, not next week's Fast Five. Yeah. Um. He's definitely. I think he's constantly getting better as an action director. Honestly, yeah. um, I mean the action. I mean, uh, you can't. Most of the scenes with the action, I'm like, great, I can just watch the movie because this is what it's designed. Absolutely. For. Yeah. It's also edited to be way more engrossing. Yeah. I don't think they're boring action sequences, which no. I think is what one and two have. Yeah. It's really boring action. Well, it's boring, and then it's edited like, look, we did it. Like you didn't do you it didn't. though. You took like a CGI. No, it doesn't or... look like no. that. <laughs> I do. They do keep reinventing Nos for these films. I anyway. also appreciate that the movie's di- trying to catch you up because they have really intense lines of dialogue of, "How long have we been doing this for, <laughs> dumb? <laughs> Seven, Seven years. years since that incident with yeah. Paul Walker." <laughs> Ah, I am informed now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Paul Walker's uh, chasing down some people in LA. It's crazy to actually see him do some police work for once. Oh, he he's like, what was he in the first one? I feel like he was just a general, like, undercover cop. He's like the head of the... He's second in command of, he's like, the, the FBI. FBI. Yeah. <laughs> Four Walker. <laughs> Brian. Oh, he's the B and Brian. <laughs> Is the FBI. Damn it! Damn it! <laughs> we'll go sit out for a bit. He's the B in Brian. Fuck. <laughs> 
Brian's the B and FBI. We can edit that together. It's going to land. Now. I'm editing, so it won't. Oh, you're not going to bother. You're not going to bother. This is all staying in. Let's talk politics. (laughs) Yeah, so we get to see a little bit of a foot chase. Yeah. It's fun. It's exciting. They fall off a roof. Uh, onto a car. Yeah. They obliterate the roof of that car. They do, don't they? That Paul Walker's like, tell me what you know. And he's like, I'm spines. My spines are in my Just mouth. Choking <laughs> on his own tongue. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a name. <laughs> I'll use that. I'll, I'll look it up in the database. What's he saying? It can't be English. You <laughs> must be foreign. <laughs> <laughs> We're not calling you 911. <laughs> 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 they find a name. The name is. The name is David Parker. Remember that, Carl? It comes back pretty cl- soon, and then we forgot about in it. In a few minutes. In a few minutes. <laughs> the next scene. <laughs> Who is David Parker? <laughs> <laughs> Them going, we don't know. Yeah, they go, well, better find him out. Why is he back on this case? I don't know why. Surely it's like... He let Vin <laughs> Diesel go, and you put him back on the case? Because there's another CIA guy that's so angry at him. And, I, and the film's like, man, that's stiff for the CIA. No, he's right. He's completely right. He's always trying to up, like, fuck over Paul Walker because he's fucked over the FBI oh. once on this exact case. He's like, but I think you got the man to track him down. No. No. Absolutely not. The I think the FBI could sue this film. <laughs> they make the FBI look like a bunch of fucking idiots. <laughs> you does. rehired Paul Walker? He should be in jail. He's the second in command of the same task force. We gave him anything he asked for. Resource? <laughs> Fuck it. Any law? He's fine. It's like if um a man had the Zodiac Killer and then went... But I do enjoy having a beer with you. Yeah. Go on. Smacks him on the bum. You have <laughs> Get fun. out of here. And then turns around, they go, the Zodiac's killed again. Can you find him? <laughs> <laughs> now, Carl, before we move on, we need to hear some very sad news. Don't. What is it? Letty's dead. No. Yeah. <sighs> the franchise will never recover from this never decision. Never recover. They would never bring back someone who's died. Never. It is just a soap opera. What oh, are we even- it is. <laughs> the, after Fast Five, it's immediate soap opera territory. <laughs> they peak with Fast Five and then they go down. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I think it was an odd decision to have him abandon Letty and have her killed off immediately. Yeah, yeah. And then I, I, I think it's unfair because we did watch these pretty recently, but I kept seeing his sister and I kept like... They also got quite romantic. It was very weird. I kept forgetting who the love interest is. We'll get into another love interest that Dom <sighs> sidesteps. That ruins this <laughs> <laughs> Um, the It is an odd decision, I think, for them to kill off Letty. Mm. Oh, no. It's, it is an, it's an odd decision. Let's see how it pans out. This movie has... It immediately has its own fun storylines it can pick up. Mm. I think I've never seen in a movie before an undercover cop having to deal with the repercussions of the family he was undercover in. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I think that's an interesting premise. Oh, there's so many interesting premises here. And they're like, we're not going to do a fucking single one of them. Constantly unsatisfying. Mm. Because again, I haven't seen this one. I've skipped straight to the next one. So I was like, oh, how do all of these relationships cultivate? They don't. <laughs> they happen off camera, I guess, between four every and five. Every film, every film, they're like, well, we've solved this issue. Now let's figure out the new issue for the new film. Because I was always confused because my assumption was, oh, Brian and Vin Diesel must be best friends the entire time. Mm. No. Oh, when do they become best friends? I don't know. I don't really know either. Because yeah. they're kind of, at the end, they have a tender moment. We'll get into it. Anyway, Tom, Dom tastes, like, he goes to the crash site where Letty died. He like This is ridiculous. He, like, tastes the petrol. He's like, there's like a Sherlock, like, analyzes the whole crime scene. He's like, I've got, I know what happened. No clue how he has this power. Use it more. He's Batman now. <laughs> yeah. He's absolutely Batman. He's bat- analyzed, like, the tire tracks. He's like, right, a green car. How? <laughs> how? Just... He stood there and shot her over there. (laughs) She tried to crawl out here. What are you using? It's his connection 
Tata? Wow. <laughs> it's like a religion. They, they, he like touches the ground. like, a car's been here. <laughs> I've had a vision. <laughs> there was a struggle. She tried to get... He stood there with the gun. <laughs> Someone asks him, how did you know? And he's like, bullet. <laughs> Just like... <laughs> yeah. The, we we believe she died in a car accident. She was shot. How? He How is, do you possibly know? For the rest of the there film... There was meth at the scene. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for the rest of the film, I don't think Vin Diesel like loses this, but he's... like His his motivation is finding Letty's killer and killing him. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty weak. Acting-wise, I don't think he changes from any other film. He's full of rage here. It seems like the same performance in every single He's one. He's never not full of rage. Yeah. <laughs> he's one of the most rageful actors I've seen in a film. <laughs> like the he's constantly flexing his muscles and being upset. Yeah. I don't know if he can smile. When was the last time we saw Vin Diesel smile? He was drinking a Corona baby. Sucking one down. We'll get to them. <laughs> I think we've got to start doing these Fast and Furious podcasts with a Corona. I in think hand. so. I'll reach out to Corona. Hey, we're mocking you. Give us some money. <laughs> yeah. We'll put a lime in it, like you suggest. <laughs> like, so condescending. Ooh, look at me with my lime. <laughs> do you like your beer with a little bit of citrus, yeah. do you? <laughs> well, it hands the flavor, does it? <laughs> How do you just make the beer with a citrus flavor then, huh? Why do we have to go out of our way to make your beer nice? What a stupid fucking business model. And it worked? No, I'm upset. Get Corona on the phone, Oscar. I'll get him on the phone. Anyway, they... Dom, okay, so Paul does like some investigative. He pretty much kills, almost kills a man for the spine. Finds out that David Parker is a lead. Dom takes some fuel on the ground. Goes, ah, David Parker, I'm looking for him. Classic meat cute, but like a reboot meat cute. Mm. They go to the same David Parker. They're going to investigate for them for their own needs. Finally, the two characters are meeting again. Yes, boy, is this scene a letdown. <laughs> it's anticlimactic. <laughs> They seem to have nothing really to talk about. A real waste of time. What do they have, really? I mean, really, all the biggest thing is like Paul let him go, which was backed with not really much because mm. he just didn't do his job right. They yeah. shouldn't have a friendship, and and it reflects quite well in the movie. Oh, absolutely. Brian gets to catch up with Mia, who is Dom's uh, sister. Yeah, we we get this scene where she says, "You don't know if you're the good guy." Pretending to be the bad guy, but maybe you're just the bad guy pretending to be the good guy. And he says, I think about that every day. <laughs> she nailed him then. <laughs> she nailed his thought for it. How did she know that? Give my poor. I've got that on my board. Yeah. I've got that on my big, on the floor of my bed. Are you a good guy or a bad guy? Or are you trying to be a good guy or a bad guy? You nailed me, Mia. She, Should we get back together? <laughs> it's one of those things where I'm like, her and Dom, they can solve crimes. <laughs> He'll analyze a crime scene and she'll just analyze she'll a just person. She'll just read a brain. It's like, I know what you're going through. She's the like, two of these people together, way smarter than Brian. Yeah. <laughs> and way Brian's smarter than Brian. Brian's on top of the FBI. Oh. He's investigating. He's trying to catch Dom and he can't catch him. Cause, anyway. Because we then also get this question. She asks, why did you let Vin go all those years ago? And Paul looks like he hasn't thought about the question. He's like, why did I? He replies, I don't know. <laughs> I would have loved an answer. Because as an audience, we don't know why no, he made that decision. I assume, unless the film's like, maybe it's a friendship they don't want to like admit. But no, I think even Paul Walker's like, I haven't got a clue. Maybe the next film will figure it out. Yeah. No. We're making it up on the fly. <laughs> she wasn't meant to ask me that question, and now we've caught it on camera. I'm not into improv. <laughs> anyway, so they both go to the house of uh, David Parker. Yeah. They learn about a race. You can just, like, the film's just like, hey, there might be a race you have to do. And you can feel the film going, yeah, there's going to be a fucking race. Don't you fucking even, you think we're going to do some of this shit? No, we're doing a race. And Brian's like a kid in a candy store. <laughs> this is the best acting, in my opinion, of Paul Walker. Oh, is 100%. He looks at this board full of cars and he's like, 23, 48, give me that one over there. I want that one with the bumper as well. Oh, shit, yeah. And she's like, which one do you want? It's like, all of them. I'm all mixing them, them in together. Big give blender. Me, give me a together. billion cars. <laughs> I want 40 engines taped together with duct tape. And Surely tape. be faster. It can't not be. Carl, we're now the big race. Who shows up? A pre-Wonder Woman Gal Gadot. This is huge. 
It is huge. I don't know what she's saying. <laughs> not only not only is her accent so thick, I'm not sure what she's saying. She only whispers. She Which only a- whispers. She gives pivotal lines. Pivotal lines. But also, for most of it, I'm thinking, oh, Dom's kind of over Letty. Because now she's kind of the love interest of the film, right? She's so into it. And she's kind of your husband. And da, da, da. Vin's like, yes. why, do you love, <laughs> why do you love me? <laughs> you look like a car. You look like a car. You just love that. Is it my muscles? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're at the race. Pretty much the uh, cartel guys like, right, like all these movies, they're like, right, if you want to win my respect, we're not going to like background check you because one guy works at the FBI. We're just going to make you all do a race. Why doesn't Vin out Brian? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know because at the moment they're not friends. I guess Vin's like, well, you did save me. But like, surely if he lost, yeah, like, gonna... uh, he's CIA. <laughs> he's FBI. He could do it so quickly. Mm. He could have Brian killed any scene. Yeah. Like... Like With that. ease. Yeah. The it's really fun to see this car race, considering in Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift, which takes place after this film, mm. they use Nokia flip phones mm. to watch a race. Mm. This one has AI GPS. Yeah, tracking. The, the, it's stunning. <laughs> With a voice. A voice actor. And yeah, it's like they have like the whole like race like format. I thought that was just for the audience. But it seems like they've all got it installed in their car. They also hilarious. They're like, well, we've got a GPS now. We don't need like the sexy girls. They're like, no, we've got this weird edit of a bunch of hot girls glitching into it before you start a race. It's like the type of sexy girls that come over a pokey machine. <laughs> just like some slots. Just like, are you ready to pull? down that one button for your feature tits like <laughs> they're ah. like sex and gambling works while we stop it race <laughs> uh fun race pretty good yeah this is uh this looks great it mm. feels really good all the crashes look fantastic yeah it's also where we begin to realize how awful of a policeman paul walker's character oh, yeah. is he finds himself on the wrong trail mm and thinks destruction of property is the best way to bring down this drug Not only board. that, but he's constantly, like, driving into crowds and just like, I'm going to beep the horn twice. If I kill you, that's on you. I've you should hear the job. horn. <laughs> yeah. I've hit the horn. <laughs> now, they're both... Now, the race ensues. Everyone, like, dies except for these two. Yeah. Dom then hits the NOS. He plays bad. He plays bad. Then Paul's like, well, I'm going to hit my NOS at the right time. And then Dom like gives him a little slap on the on the car butt, spins out of control. Dom wins the race. They have constantly have this gag, and I think this gag stays through a lot of the the films. Mm-hmm. Um, who do we think would have won? Oh, that's right. Yes, constantly like, well, I would have won of you. Because then I remember in the, the the later ones. Mm. There's this weird contract that like I think The Rock, Jason Statham, and Vin Diesel have. Yeah. Where whenever they fight or race. No gonna, one can yeah. win. They have to all be even, which is a crazy contract to have in a film that has stakes. I like, know. <laughs> and these some of these people are brought in as a villain. Yeah. They're like, oh, I'm the villain. I can't lose. <laughs> like, just, oh. I guess you're okay. part of the team then in the next, next one. one. Yeah. Charlie's Theron's like, oh, I guess that, that's new. Me. I'm happy to have the shit beat out of me in the, for the sake of a good story. Yeah. They're like, uh, really? Because you can end up on the team if yeah. you play things right. Imagine that right. three guys like, oh, thank God, a woman we can beat up and win. <laughs> <laughs> Contractually, we're allowed to do that. Um, yeah, who do you think would have won? I think Paul Walker would have oh, yeah, won. Yeah, I think Paul Brian's Walker clearly the better driver. Won. Dom <laughs> does the NOS, and then Paul goes, that's too early, hits the NOS, gets in front, and then Dom taps him. Dom's a bad driver, yeah. and he never gets better. <laughs> he near only gets worse. He's crashed every car twice in each uh-huh. film. <laughs> he only gets better at other transportation methods. <laughs> He get he goes. You know what? Driving's not for me. And as these movies progress, he gets great at trains, planes, and automobiles. Yeah. So, hey, that's where it is. Um. So Vin gets brought into this uh drug smuggling group. Yes, I want to ask you this question because I'm confused. It feels like Dom's invited, yeah. and then Paul just comes along. Why is he allowed in? So. Paul's allowed to come because mm. there is a cowboy man who's very cocky. Yes. He's one of the other drivers, mm-hmm. but 
Paul Walker arranges a bust of this cowboy man and plants meth on him. Yes, that makes sense. Bad cop. Bad cop. Dirty cop. One of the other cops are like, hey man, that's, that's not, gonna, not gonna, stick. gonna stick. And Paul's like, it doesn't have to. Winks at the camera. Cuts to Paul being a part of the team. <laughs> yeah. and you're like, oh no, what happened to that other guy? Like, he would have been killed. He killed, 100%. Oh, what a dirty cop. <laughs> what a dirty cop. It's not even like a dirty cop that gets results constantly. He's a dirty cop that lets the go- people go. <laughs> oh, we now also get our first Corona of the movie of, of the franchise. I know it's su- it's subtle though, isn't it? You know, it's very. Oh, what am I drinking? It's gonna corona. have a Corona. <laughs> Hold the alarm. <laughs> it's the. It's really this franchise. This franchise's shaken, not stirred. Yes. Whereas James Bond was like, now I'll have a Heineken. <laughs> they were like, we saw what Fast and Furious did. Let's do that. Can I get a zero percent Heineken, please? <laughs> Calories low too. <laughs> Watching my weight, and I need to drive later. That's how I get this body, huh? <laughs> now, um, they're snooping around the boss's lair because they're both yeah. in. Then uh, I do want to shout out: mm-hmm. there are a lot of uh, lesbians making out mm-hmm. in this lair. Mm-hmm. Do we think they're at a gay bar? It'd be funny if it was a lesbian bar, and they were like, the the ma- the, ge- <laughs> the mafia's like, we'll h- hook up shop here, and they're like. <laughs> Isn't this hot? They're like, this is our bar. What are you doing here? They're like, we do illegal activity. We just want a good vibe, you know? And I think you guys bring that here. So thank you. You're just fun. Yeah. You're just a bit of fun. You want to get away from the boys, you know? You guys come to the lads. It's just chilling. I don't want to be here. Have a corona. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, imagine this guy. (laughs) Whenever I go to a club, I get a bunch of girls coming up to me, trying to get my number. I just want to have fun with my guys. None of this bullshit, you we know? We first went to an all-male gay club. Things went awry there. <laughs> we realised lesbians is where it's at. <laughs> this is when I realised, is Fast and Furious a, a queer-inclusive franchise? We're watching it during Pride Month, so you know it is. Oh, dude. And I'll say right now, the reason why Vin and Paul don't give up on each other, I think, I think we know, we know. I think, I think we, we know. know why, huh? That, lo- that longing look in Seven? <sighs> yeah. These okay. two have touched tips before. <laughs> They don't know how to discuss it later in life, but look. Hey, man, you want to look under my bonnet? He's like, yeah, I wouldn't mind looking under your bonnet. They're just talking car metaphors. I don't know, is my sister looking? No, she's not looking. Get in the car. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so they're snooping around. They're snooping around. We meet a character. Yes. Who we are told is the villain. Yes. Should we just unpack it right now? Let's just unpack it right now, because I have got the exact same note. It's like (laughs) the, the, the film goes, right, Here's the villain of the film. I'm kind of like, okay, for the whole thing, I'm like, it's kind of a weak villain. It seems like they're kind of amping up to something else. It turns out he does it. Hey, has a double who's like the big mafia. It turns out the twist is that he's just the villain. Yeah, that there was a fake villain above him. Yeah. Just to throw off the scent that he's the main villain. Yeah. But I only ever thought he was the main villain. Yeah. So this twist made... Made no no sense. Yeah. It did, if anything, it just made the villain seem lesser. It confused me. Yeah, <laughs> I thought, wait, wasn't he always in charge? And if anything, it seems like this, the FBI now has such a solid case because all they have is videos of this guy, and they've been like, well, once we get to the big guy, then we can arrest him. It seems like they've got him pretty easily. They, I feel like this is the point of the movie where they win. Mm. This is where they should have won. Um, but Dom's vengeance gets in the way. He's chatting to Gal Gadot. He's like, "Who owns that green car?" She's like, "That guy over there." We don't know if she said that. <laughs> She's. We all, can assume through all pointing. I, all I heard was like, Vin going. Oh, I think it was Vin, or it was either Gal. That's like, I like a girl that has twenty percent angel in her eyes or eighty percent devil in her eyes. What's that for a pickup line? Useless, <laughs> especially at a lesbian bar. <laughs> If Gal if Gal's pretending to be interested in Vin Diesel, I think we know which way she swings. We get into the nitty gritty, which yes. is what they're hired for. Yeah. They have to run drugs mm-hmm. across a desert, yeah. through a hill, mm-hmm. and out into Mexico. Yes. What did we think of this? Well, I'm confused now. So they're smuggling heroin mm. from the US into Mexico. I guess. That's what I kind of understood. So I'm a bit confused because it seems like the border was very like it seems strict. I don't I know. I don't know how it works, no. like America works. But my understanding was I thought things were made in Mexico and then sent over and to America. America, yeah. yeah. 
Maybe it's a very progressive film. Maybe, Maybe it's a are... scathing indictment of America. Yeah, they're like, we actually have all this stuff. It's Mexico. They get blamed for it. We're ruining Mexico. Yeah. Which is, I think that's what Sicario is about. Yeah. Was this movie ahead of Sicario? I think so. <sighs> wow. Denny Venu was like, wow, you seem fast and furious. I've got to do that. I've got an idea. <laughs> but we're going to cast far more superior <laughs> actors. <laughs> anyway, yes. Yeah, so the big thing is they've got a bunch of heroin. And they've got to drive for a mine. Now, I just wrote down they drove for a mine. I didn't realise the mine would be the set piece of the film. It's a real shame it is the set piece of the film. It's not only a long sequence here, but the entire third act set in this mine. Yeah. It looks awful. It is. And it's CG. And like, you know. It's a shame. It's, it's a, a shame real because shame. Because they've done so much stuff like on practical. Locate, practical. And then for the like rest of it, it's in this stupid mine. In the third act, when they get out of the mine, it gets into real Mad Max vibes. It looks great, it doesn't looks it? Awesome. It looks awesome. It was before Mad Max. It's like a bunch of cars driving in a desert, chasing. It's just, again, Denny and George Miller were like, should we just do our own thing on this, put our own little spin on you it? Have you seen Fast and Furious? No, no, the one without the V's. <laughs> They've nailed the it. The V's. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Anyway. It was very dark. I didn't know what was happening, but they definitely drove for a mine. Yeah, they definitely drove for a mine. Who built this? <laughs> it looks like it would have taken ages. Well, because the cartel, because I assume it's like to smuggle people through the border. Car tell. tell. It was there it, the entire time. The entire time. Halt the cars. <laughs> we know how we can win the war on drugs. It's the cars. <laughs> it's in the name. Car but, and tell. But it's driven. It's it's built to fit two cars through. And I, sure, maybe like production wise, but it seems like. A smaller tunnel would have sufficed. I know. It's also all held up by wood. Yeah. It like, was like a prospect of mine. Not even thick wood. I'm surprised they didn't pass like a dead canary yeah. or something. <laughs> like. <laughs> oh, God. A lot of gas in this thing. Probably shouldn't drive cars. Nobody breathe. <laughs> Nobody breathe. All the exhaust will kill you. It's got one of those signs that's like return to recycled air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> the big sign over it. Change your radio station to, <laughs> oh, to There's a blockage the coming up. Everyone slow down. <laughs> a merge lane in this cartel tunnel? Damn it. They do the heroin. Yep. They, they get the heroin over They there. get to the other side. Vin meets the person who killed Letty. This is huge. He knows this yes. because he saw this man silhouette at the crime scene. <laughs> well, he hasn't, wasn't at the crime scene, yeah. but he tasted the fuel and like... And uh, saw and, it. Uh, how, is that how he figures them out? I, I think I how I figured it yeah. out. Yeah. Crazy. Well, that's the silhouette. Yeah. But he's, Bet Vin's thinking the same thing. <laughs> Him and I, we're on the same page of who the murderer is. Anyway, so he's pretty much like, I've got the heroin, but I don't give a shit. I'm going to kill you. And the mm. guy's like, well, I've got a gun. So what are you going to do about it? Now, I didn't look this up. Is Nos flammable? Sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, is cap- it, but isn't I'm, it on I'm, fire when they use it? I'm pretty sure Nos is a made up thing. I know it probably isn't, but it seems like it's just the, the, the sort of glue that holds these films together. Just like add some Nos to it. Anyway, the Nos blows up. Mm. Vin uh, beats up the guys and Paul and stuff get away. I thought we were going into the third act here. Yes, me too. I thought we were going to get into an awesome chase. Mm. Like I was, I, I thought we have now met the villain. Yeah. This is the guy that has killed Letty. And it's Paul and Vin on the run, mm. trying to like finish the job yeah. in Mexico, driving around. Naturally, Great. they this form just... into a friendship. Yeah. Oh my god, it writes itself. Does Paul maybe say, "Don't kill him," but at the end, you know, maybe Letty like wouldn't want this, that sort of stuff. No, 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 no. That happens. This scene ends pretty quickly, mm. and they go and hide the drugs. Hide the drugs. Where do you reckon they hide the drugs? I mean, it's kind of fun. They hide it in the impound locker. Yeah, for that the US own. It's the first place I would have looked. Really? Yeah. But Paul Everyone said knows that, you... Paul said it was the last place they'd look. Everyone knows you always check the impound locker first. <laughs> in every situation. In every situation. <laughs> Anytime I've lost my keys. Usually at the impound locker. In the car that in- I got impounded. <laughs> in a crushed little cube. <laughs> They're the keys. Oh, there they are. <laughs> I haven't been able to get to my house for weeks. <laughs> um, they're also... The FBI has now decided they're no longer involved in the case. Yes. So they, they ring up Brian. They go, bring Dom in. We're going to end the case now. Yeah. You have the drugs. Everything's fine. Listen to us. And Brian goes, no, nah, not coming in. Bad cop. Bad cop. He's like, what? Because his like, whole argument is like, what are they going to do? We just sold $60 million worth of heroin. That will barely make a dent. You know what we have to do? 
We need to kill the leader, and you can let my friend Vin go. I'm he's not my friend, he's just some guy. But I will kill, I will ruin this case if he does not get let off. Brian thinks he has all the power for some <laughs> reason. Because all he's been given is powers. Of the every movie we've seen him in, he's done undefiable feet. He has, he has no bound, no ceiling to where his his reign can end. This would be me in the background when the, the head of the FBI is thinking, Why won't you bring him in? This is me in the background. This is what he did last time. Yeah. And you put him on the case again. <laughs> and he's doing it again. Last time he crashed a boat with a car. He's never He got been promoted. Good... <laughs> he's never been a good cop. <laughs> Stop giving him his own case. <laughs> Denounce him to like when traffic lights go out and he's got to wave cars through. <laughs> He'd be good at that. He would be good at that. Well, he does like cars, so yeah, he would actually smash that. Big gleeful smile on his face. Ooh, a Ford! A Ferrari! <laughs> Ooh. Now... Jaguar! That was another one. I'm, I'm, one. Now, now, I'm confused because you're, we are right. He went from US to Mexico. Yeah. They now go back to Dom's sister, mm. who I guess lives in Mexico? No, she's in LA. That's what I thought. So how yeah. did they get back to LA? Just drove, I They guess. just drove. I guess there's no drugs. Not like the FBI No, was but they did them. have drugs, didn't they? They just hit him in an impound locker. But in Mexico? Yeah. Because now I'm thinking, here's the thing. They've gone from the US to Mexico. They've driven back to the US to meet with uh, Dom's sister. Mm. Okay? Yeah. I think we're on the same page, right? She's crying in the kitchen. Yeah. Brian goes, oh, now's a good time to lay on the moves. <laughs> I got to tell you, anytime I'm crying and my partner's thinking, oh, my partner my partner tries to approach and is like, oh my God, what's wrong? I go, get away from me. Let me deal with this. It's crazy that Paul, like Vin's like, just learns such a horrible secret. Essentially, let, like Paul's the last one that saw Letty. I, it, it's not that big of a deal. No, it's not. It turns out Letty was only involved in this to try and clear Dom's name. Yeah. Nothing. So Dom calls Letty's death. Dom then goes, right, let's go. And Paul's like, great, I'm just going to quickly go fuck your sister. Do you mind? And it seems like he doesn't mind. How long do we think Paul lasts? Not long. Not long? I reckon he's really quick. I <laughs> like pretty <a> sure. <laughs> pretty sure Vin goes, hey, do you want to get some in and out? And Paul goes, I've just done it. I've just done it. I've just done it. That's how 30, quick I am. 33 seconds. That's how the drive through does it, and that's how I do it. Isn't it? He's like, hey, you've heard of a 10 second car. Yeah. <laughs> Get ready for a 10 second poll. Oh! That's a poll coming. Walking's never been so fast. <laughs> they don't call me Paul. <laughs> walking for nothing. And by walking, I mean coming very, very quickly. quickly. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Anyway, we, we have get fun. We, we get, have fun in the podcast, yeah. don't we? But we should wrap this up. I, I need you to leave. <laughs> um, I need to get out of here. Um, Do we learn the big twist now? That Yeah, we find the big twist. So it turns out who we thought the villain was really the villain the entire yeah. time. The other cop is the one that fucks up this. Yes, I do think this is funny. Because essentially this is the only time the FBI agent has like get, been given a chance. They do a meetup. And he's like, go arrest the double. And it actually turns out it's actually the original guy. He should have waited an additional 60 seconds yes. as he was told to. But it, I think it's unfair on the film because essentially they've only shown him being pretty... He's irrational anger-wise, but his motivation is always sound. Mm. So for him to be this rash, I think is just not part of his character. It's also really funny that it's the first time they hold... Brian's actions accountable. Oh yeah. <laughs> Even though this isn't his downfall, <laughs> they go, "You really jumped the gun on that." There's going to be a formal inquiry it was, it into was what a, you've it done. It was a great plan. In fairness, <laughs> he almost got away if they just waited three seconds for the piece of paper to print. Why had they never printed that paper before? No, I don't know. I've got no idea. Print what the paper are... earlier. Who are we getting? Who? Someone print a picture. All right, but it's not on the inter. They had. Uh, AI, <laughs> they had AI sat nav, and they didn't have a picture on the computer that they could print out. You know, it'd be amazing. Um, time constraint for the movie, mm. beginning of the film. They've got to print out a piece of paper. <laughs> it's going to take ninety minutes to print. <laughs> That's how long the movie needs to be. That's and by tight. the end, we find out who's on the paper. Who was it? Kaiser Sose. Surely, by like I don't know. 72 minutes you printed the picture and you're getting like the header <laughs> nah man <laughs> that's the twist <laughs> it prints up a bit. the header has the name <laughs> it's the name that throws you the face they've changed so like the tourist different face love that movie you love it oh, it's a great movie 
Johnny Depp is the villain. Classic. And the hero, oh. I guess. <laughs> um, all right, so we get into our final action sequence. Yes. We, we find out who the villain is. Yes. He retreats to Mexico, so we yeah. can't be touched. Mm-hmm. Paul Walker and Vin Diesel just go, eh, we'll just go get him. Mm. They go and get him with ease. Um, a big chase ensues. Yes, this is quite fun. Essentially, they so Paul's like, we're going to get this guy. Vin's ready to kill him. But mm. Paul's like, no, let's bring him back to the US because I am a cop. And quite frankly, if I kill this man, there's no more chances. So they go, right, we're going to put him in the car. We're going to drive up to the US. Then all his buddies in their fun cars drive after them. Yeah. We get the person that killed Letty gets involved. Yes. He was at a chicken fight. Yeah. And they have to come up to him on his day off and go... Oh, Boss has been kidnapped. I know, but he, and his face, because all the other people are like running off, and he's just like, God so not, damn. he was chicken I was just, winning. I got it. I went. I, got, I just want some time away. From, it, you need boundaries of work. You know how long I've been waiting for this cockfight? <laughs> I'll tell you, a week. They don't happen often, believe it or not. They're Quite weekly. A rarity. Yeah, it's a weekly meetup. Only happens fifty-two times a year. You, if you get, if you miss one, you're out for two weeks. I, and you know how long it takes to raise a cock. Hours. Hours. As you can tell, we have no skills other than this podcast. We have got no information outside the world. I don't know how a cockfight works. <laughs> I no mean, it's probably clue. a good thing, right? You wouldn't want to be like, oh, let me give you the, the logistics of a cockfight. <laughs> <laughs> if hey, you started hey, rattling listen, off... let me break this down. <laughs> <laughs> what um, you're going to want to do is you want to invest in a good hand. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to birth you a champion. Now, a lot of people think size is what you want. You really want the talons. You oh. want the talons sharp. You want, and you want them hungry. Oh, you do. Starving, make sure the, the claws are big, but you want a sharp beak. Yeah. Sharpen that beak. You know how you do it? Feeding it an all peanut diet. Yeah. It's it got grinds to it down. Them. Yeah. yeah. It grinds it down. Peanuts are really sharp. Yeah. Do you believe it or not? Train it against a dog or a hound, <laughs> if you will, to begin. <laughs> A then lot, turn uh, it on other cocks. A lot of them will die, but if you get a cock that can fire a dog, well, then a cock's nothing to this cunt. He's going to fucking rule, and you're going to make some good, a time air profit. Time air profit. You're welcome. Come back next week for more financial advice. <laughs> <laughs> next week we'll be discussing ETFs and the uh, Greyhound industry. <laughs> Just knife fights. Yeah, yeah. Casual knife fight. And you converse me behind the alley and George Street, Sydney, <laughs> next week. <laughs> All right, so we get this big chase. The start of it looks stunning. They're in the desert. They like jump around. Looks amazing. They then do this big wide of them all driving, and then they're like, "Right, let's." Ma- we've got you know, to look good right now. A green screen. <laughs> yeah, a green screen tight space. Because I assume this mines one path, but it seems like they keep driving off to different sections. They also burst out of the mountain. Yeah, like it's nothing, but it's rock. Mm. I assume it's like wooden hidden, but I don't know how they know. Some of it doesn't look like no, wood. No. Some of it looks like chiseled rock. <laughs> Nothing to add there, yeah. Yeah, stated a pretty good. Anyway, they, they drive through the mine for a while. It's, it it's goes really for a while. long. It's really yeah. long and really disinteresting until yeah. they get back out of the mine. Then it's a bit more fun. Oh, it's a lot more fun. Now we get some silly deaths. We do. I think it's really so. Paul Walker is the one that has the villain. He yeah. crashes his car mm-hmm. um, and then is confronted by the person that killed Letty. Mm-hmm. I laughed out loud when the villain stuck in the car goes, Hey, get me out of here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a, so helpless. Because it's like we've had, we've like bigged up a big villain. It's Why do these films have not very good villains? Or right at the end go, shit, we haven't got one. Tokyo Drift did it. Yeah, I feel like Too Fast is probably the better one. But even then... It seemed like he's he a was, shit villain, but at least shit, he's there the entire time. But he was time. fucked because he was pretty much like his girlfriend's a CIA operative, so pretty much any moment they could have got him. Yeah, and I can't remember the first. Is Dom technically the first? Maybe. Oh no, that other gang. No, the, the other gang was the villain. This is what I think helps the franchise moving forward as they start. It's like the Rock is kind of a villain in the fifth one. Hmm. Uh, the sixth one is Luke Evans. The seventh one is Jason Statham and Digimon Hazu. Oh, I, butchered, I butchered that name. Mm. The eighth one, I think, is Charlie's Theron. The yeah. ninth one's John Saint. Like it's like they start getting bigger names. Bigger to, like, names. To fight so against. finally, the villains become more memorable. Yeah, just through celebrity purposes, I guess. Yeah. Um, I think Jason Momoa is the villain in the new one. Gotcha. So, yeah. It's fun. Idris Elba's the villain in Hobbs and Shaw. Like oh, the, yeah. Freaking love Hobbs and Shaw. Haven't seen it, but I hear great things. You're going to hate <laughs> it. Um, 
<laughs> um, so... Yeah, so so pretty much uh, Vin drives his car. And I don't... Again, not car people. He does a wheelie with his car, <laughs> smacks into the, into the, vi- the guy who killed Letty. Really obliterates yeah. him. He should be blood smeared over a hood. Yeah. Is this M? What is this? I think it's M. They use one... F word. I yeah. don't know what fuck. I don't know. We're not bound by ten <laughs> movie standards. We can say it's a PG watch. podcast. We called someone a cunt moments ago. I think we're fine. We've said cock many times, <laughs> yeah. but in reference to a chicken, so it's okay. Yeah, I guess that's. I mean, it was for a chicken fight. So I don't. <laughs> I don't know. How no, it's under mature the themes. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then what they do with the villain? They just take him. They take him back. Yeah. They let him get arrested. Yeah. Um, and we get a pretty harsh cut. Yeah. To a court case. Oh my god. This is huge. Vin is sent... Oh, you said... Well, Vin is now up for trial because he's done so many crimes. Countless crimes. The judge is like, listen, you did a good thing this time, but we've got you on murder, grand theft auto, generally just being uh, wanted for years. So we're going to give you 25 to your life. And Mm. Letty and Paul are like, damn it! I really thought his actions this one time would pay off. No. No. Do you think this? I think it's justified his sentence. Oh, absolutely. The this movie definitely does not do enough to make us think that Vin Diesel is a good person. Yeah, the whole film's him he bent wants, on rage. He wants blood. Yeah, he's out for revenge, and he hasn't really got. All he's got is a vision. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that that's the murderer. He's not even planned it very well. He's just like I think this. He's the probably schizophrenic. Yeah. And cars are his little comfort, you know? Once he's in a car, that all melts Two away. Two things you probably shouldn't put together is a schizophrenic and, like, addiction to adrenaline. Yeah. That can only amount to bad I don't things. Know, ten films? Yeah, that's all it could really do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow, what a franchise. Anyway, you're thinking, oh, damn, Vin's gone. But this is the fourth film. Is this really where it ends? This blew my mind. Yeah. There's a, hu- a few things in this movie that blew my mind because I, again, haven't seen it. Only seen the fifth and onwards, right? Mm. The fifth one opens with this sequence in full. Oh, that's f- sick. Yeah, so it blew my mind that the movie ends on the this. start, yeah. Yeah, and I was like, oh, they set this up. Yeah. <laughs> blew my mind. It's crazy that this is the first one. It really is a reboot. It's they're... the first movie again. Yeah. Really. Yeah. It feels like they're just restarting the franchise from scratch. Mm. Anyway, uh, Paul is going to break out Vin in yeah. uh, a We bus. end on a, on a note end. of hope. Yeah. For these characters. Maybe they'll be friends. Who knows? Carl, who would watch Fast and Furious? Cut the thurs. The thurs. Honestly. <laughs> the thurs wouldn't watch this. No, they would not. They're missing out. Well, they're pretty bitter. They're like, we were in the top three. This one, I mean, it's got the lowest rating, I think, mm. on critics. Which is like, critics, fair enough. It's a fourth car film. Yeah. yeah. Do people like this one? Wait, can I just have a look at like the general rankings? Okay, we're reading the Empire's uh, ranking of these films. So we've got the first, the worst one is Too Fast, Too Furious, uh, Tokyo Drift, F8, Fast and Furious. This is kind of, this is still pretty low. Yeah. I'd, I'd say this is the one, it's boring, mm. but it feels cohesive because the last three have been a bit of a mess. How would you rank them so far? Um... Tokyo Drift being the boring one, I think probably the most, it's standard, it's bog, it's fine. I just, I'm going to forget about it. Too Fast, Too Furious probably after that. Then probably the first one, because I just think it's wacky and they're doing their own thing. And then I guess this is technically my, I wouldn't say. your favorite so far? So far, I mean, first one's definitely my favorite. I think the first one's still the best one. Yeah. If somebody had to be, if somebody asked me what to watch right now of these four, I'd just say the first one. Yeah. Yeah, I think this, I think this is bad. Yeah, because I think it's really an unfulfilling film from the perspective of it being an immediate sequel to the first one. Yeah, I think it leaves things completely unanswered. I think a lot of the action doesn't have a lot of tension. I think while it's better made than any of the other ones, it's definitely a movie that has no idea what it's doing. No. Um. What year did this come out? Uh, 2009. Wouldn't surprise me if this was written during the writer's strike. It um, might have I been. I think which is around 7 and 8. 2007 yeah. and 8. Because um, the fifth one's like a lot better and a lot more entertaining. Yeah. Um, and considering it's the same writer and directing team, 
like it's weird that it's starting to form into like what we you can tell know. yeah yeah the evolution of the movie like you can tell that this one's sort of picking its best parts from what's before yeah it. but just i mean the action's probably the only thing that's kind of keeping me going like yeah right here. because it is some of it when it is good it's like all right they're just driving some car that's fun mm. there's no way to deny that but everything joining it together is just strange yeah for sure and the characters are all over the place and they've already got the soap opera-esque Someone's died. Yeah. It's just, yeah. Funny this movie's about solving a murder. <laughs> Crazy. Well, he solves it in the first 10 minutes and I then know. it's just a hunt. <laughs> it's a hunt for a silhouette yeah. that he thinks he's seen. <laughs> God, he's on well. <sighs> so, um, who do I think this is for? I mean, and Fast and Furious fans even like this one. Who knows? I, I guess know. not. I don't know what they want, really. I, yeah. d- I still don't really know. When what... they go, b- take it back to basics, yeah. I still don't know what they're referring so to. So far, it's just Tokyo Drift, and that's been like a pretty bland one, I think. Yeah. So, who's for... Th- I think this is probably for people that don't want to watch The Fast and the Furious. Mm. If you go, oh, that's an old movie to me, I guess. I guess watch uh, this one. This is probably the... If you're starting this franchise, yeah, start you here. probably could skip the first three. Absolutely. I mean, you'd be listen- missing some bangers, but again, sprinkled banger parts. Yeah. I think you're, yeah, I think I've nailed it, which is. Brave. You've been, <laughs> I'm glad I'm speaking out now. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I think this is a easy entry point. This movie is a reboot. Yeah. It absolutely is a reboot. I feel like tonally it would keep the same. Yeah. And then and you get a little sprinkle. I'm sure Sean from the third one's going to pop back in. But you know what's missing from both this one and Tokyo Drift is a sense of humor. Mm. And that's what's gained in the next one, in my opinion. Gotcha. And that's, I think the next one's really where I think. Because they're not winking to the camera at all. No. They're not like. They're not really is... having any fun. No. And they're taking themselves dead seriously. Yeah. The next one is a silly heist movie with cars. Mm. So finally, they're doing something right. Like yeah. Oscar, who would watch Fast and Furious? No uh, these. No these. You took my answer. Um, I believe if you're really into do we think this is the best stunts of the of the There's some fun set if you want to just see I don't know, if you want to turn your brain off and just see the set pieces, fast forward through this. It's probably the best set. Furiously piece. fast forward through this. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, there we, there we go. I think this is while the opening has a really good stunt, mm. the rest of them are just races. I don't yeah. think they have that many stunts. I think the one that probably has the most stunts is probably the first one still, which is just them like hanging off of a real truck mm. back in the day when they're like, we don't care if the stunt guy dies. Yeah, fuck it. <laughs> it is crazy that they've yet to do just a straight story about drag racing. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, they kind of have, but then they were like, Let's... I think they know there's nothing interesting about that. No. They've got the fun cars. Yeah. That's about it, really. If you want to watch... I think there's other racing movies that are... If you want to watch... Need for Speed is right there. <laughs> but Ford v. Ferrari, Rush. There's other other ones that are way better. I feel like, like with the drag scene, though, you're trying to get I know. Past. I mean, RuPaul's capitalized on that, but that's really it. And that's in and that's in LA. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Carl, what do you, you wet your palate with? Huh? What do you wet your whistle with? <sighs> what did I wet my little whistle with? I watched Creed 3. Oh, yeah? Yeah. People seem to be raving about this movie. Mm-hmm. I think it's very silly. Really? Yeah, it's a very silly film. The third in the Creed, and then the... F- f- is it the seventh Rocky film, technically? Yeah, more, I think. Yeah. Eighth or ninth. Um, why do you think it's silly? What, what's what's the go? Um, I think Jonathan Majors is really good in it, but the conceit of his character and then the two of them fighting is happening at such a, a propelled speed. Mm. And I'm very confused as to how the fighting world would really react to the decisions that are made. <laughs> um, Creed's also retired, has to come out of retirement. Just, He's retired. Yeah, God. I know. Wow. They're really milking this thing dry, but people are loving it. This one. Yeah, they are. It has good fights. The end fight's really good, and Jonathan Majors is a great villain. Mm. I think it's one hundred percent propelled by Jonathan Majors. Gotcha. Who is just being a good villain all round at Thank the moment? God, he's had this, and then and and just like is that basically two two hits where everyone goes, "You're working in both yeah. of these completely." That's a, a bit of a win for him. Just like oh God, okay, I'm doing it. Yeah, absolutely. So so good for him. I really like Jonathan Majors, nice. and I think he's going to have a very fruitful career. Mm. Carl, I don't have a palate cleanser, but what the hell are we doing next week? We're taking a little break from Fast and Furious. A little pause. A little a pause. Little, we're, we're putting on the brakes. 
We see yellow light up ahead. We, Soon it'll be turning red. So we're, we're, we're coming to a, a slowdown. Huh? It's like a speed bump's coming up. And we're doing another sort of racing-esque movie. Mm. Yeah. About a little bit more about animals. Yeah. A little bit more about singers. Yeah. A little bit more about crocodiles. Freaking Lyle Lyle Crocodile. The Shawn Mendes 2022 classic. Wow. Yeah, I'm saying it right now. It's already a classic. I think people are going to remember. I think people are going to look back on Lyle pretty fondly. That's why we're doing it. <laughs> oh, thank you for listening. Thank you.